We're at NAB here in uh, Las Vegas at the Black Magic Design booth, and we're chatting with Darren about the new G2 Extreme ISO. Tell me a little bit about why this is the perfect time to make a G2 of this device. Cheers, John. Yes, so we're showing the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO G2 here. Um, this is a, a great evolution of an already hugely popular product range. We got a bunch of feedback from customers around their usability of the, the predecessor um, product, how they were using it, the types of projects they were working on. And then with a few advancements in other areas of, of our product range, we've kind of mashed together a few fe features into this one to kind of produce, I think, what's the best ISO switcher we, we've ever made. Yeah. Um, the feature set in here is super comprehensive, whether it be audio tools or um, ability to trigger replays from right. here. There's a bunch of stuff we've added into this, which I think for, for customers who maybe reach the limits of what their ATEM Mini Extreme potentially does right now, or yeah. maybe the ones that are using the four input and were maybe thinking about stepping up to an eight input, mm now's the time to, to jump on board this one. One of the things I'm really excited about as somebody who makes a graphic software is that I always encourage people to use key fill graphics, but that's two of your eight inputs gone. Yeah. And so the Thunderball is something I'm really excited about. Tell me a little bit about that yeah, feature. Super excited with this actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the primary use case that we're showing here at the booth, for example, is for replay out of Resolve. Right, so right. the Thunderbolt interface on this is going to be working bi-directionally. So we can send video out of the switcher into a computer for things like uh, multi-view, for example. Mm. Um, but then we're getting back two channels of key and fill back into this as well. So we're showing it in DaVinci Resolve with replay. Yeah. But because it's effectively using the desktop video driver, that means that other applications could theoretically use that same key and fill exactly. into this as well. And as you said, you're not using up any of the, the eight video inputs because we're using an additional input to yeah. do that for us. So I think we're really excited to see how, how customers are gonna use that. Um, again, I mentioned we're using it for Resolve for, for replay. Right. Um, the replay functionality that we've got within Resolve now for smaller productions, perhaps doing small kind of college sports, high school sports, that kind of thing, um, this becomes a really powerful tool for that. We've even included um, the Q run and dunk buttons yeah. from our Resolve uh, replay feature set. So that means that rather than the replay operator uh, having full control over the production, I, as the technical director, can choose when I'm gonna run or dump mm -hmm. or queue up the, the replay as well. Yeah. One thing I'd notice right away about the device is the, let's say, lack of buttons. Mm -hmm. Because before I think it was, the, maybe there's the same mounts, but anyway, there was a lot <laughs> more buttons. Yeah. Exactly, before. Um, and as an eight input switcher, with 10 buttons on the front, but I also have other things like media players and super source and other things I want to show. So yeah. is there a way to configure the device so that I can have one of those 10 buttons to be my super source and another one to be the Thunderbolt coming back? So right now, upon, uh, upon how we're showing you right here, mm -hmm. is we've got our eight video inputs, our lots into inputs one through eight. Nine is currently showing us media player one and number 10 is showing us our Thunderbolt source coming yeah. from the computer. Um, the idea is that 9 and 10, at least, will be mappable okay. upon release of this product. So if you want to show something different on sources 9 and 10, then you'll be able to map that accordingly to, to have that. Whether we will make it all 10 is still TBC, okay. um, but certainly 9 and 10 will be mappable, so you can put whatever sources you want to go yeah. to those ones. That'd be nice. Uh, one vote for all mappable. Add it to the list. If check. you're listening, yeah. Check. But you are listening, yeah. I am, yeah, I mean, and, and it's on video as well. Exactly, yeah. And these buttons, unlike the previous one, which were like the sort of soft tactile buttons, mm. these are the ones you can pop off the caps and, and change what it says underneath yeah, there, right? you can label this if you want to. Exactly. So we've taken these from our ATEM advanced panels. Yes. So the positive feedback was, was fantastic around when we released the advanced panels, the feel of these buttons. When you press them, you know you've pressed them. Yes. You can kind of uh, rest your finger in there. You can, that's lovely, what I like. Lovely indentation there, so you can feel like, so the first three sources, you know exactly mm. which one you sat on all the time. Um, you've got no kind of worry or hesitation that you're actually yeah. choosing that as a source. So the quality of those buttons is, is, is far superior. We've also added in, obviously, the, the fader here as well, yeah, exactly. um, which can be used for transitions. Yeah. Um, and that's just a really nice addition to, to have that in there for customers who want to have that yeah. manual control over the transition speed. And one last thing I really like is the ability now to, instead of just control one HDMI output, uh, you can control multiple right from the front of the box. Yeah. What, two of the three, so there's three now as well. Yeah. Correct. But yeah. you can control two of the three outputs straight from the from the top there. Correct, right? yeah, so you've got three HDMI outputs. Um, 
as you rightly said, you've got full control over what goes to all three of those. Mm -hmm. In the software, you can choose between all three. Yes. But we have given dedicated buttons for the first two on the panel. Um, we've given some kind of presets of what we expect people were using see, yeah. them for, but we've got our audio uh, tool uh, set as well. Yes. Um, and we've got our multi-view uh, output there. So the audio um, audio output, that's a really interesting one yeah, right. because what we have got in this ATEM switcher is the advanced Fairlight audio tools. Mm -hmm. So previously, if you've ever seen our ATEM television studio, you've got the pots in the dials and the LCDs that have all of the representations yeah. of the audio on there. Now, obviously, they're great tools to have, but then when you've got the LCDs built in, that increases the cost of the product. Really, yeah, so to keep the costs at a manageable level, um, we thought what a great idea it would be to put the audio interface on a HDMI output, and then that now is dynamic, depending on what tool set I want to change. So yeah. right now it's on the, uh, the camera page, so you can see I've got options to, to dial in camera control right, here. Yeah. So, what you've got along these 10 dials here correlates to the one, two, three, four, through 10 yeah. along here. So as I change that to level, my dials then change what they do. So right. now I'm controlling level from here. If I jump back to, um, if I jump to the EQ, for example, that first one's gonna be the camera, my second one's gonna be my makeup, the third one, frequency, and so on. So the dynamic way in which it changes is a really powerful way to do that, while still keeping the cost down by not having extra LCDs across the exactly. top. Exactly. And how about availability on the Extreme ISO G2 soon? Yeah, really soon this one. So I think we're going to be June, July when we see this one come through. Okay. So I'm, I'm super excited to see people get their hands on this and see what they can produce. I can't wait to try it out. We're still at NAB and we're here at the Black Magic booth talking about the brand new Video Hub Minis with Darren, right? Yep. Tell me, tell me about the three new models and uh, what the sizes are and what's, what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got uh, three models, as you say. Mm -hmm. We have a four input by two output a six input by two output and an eight input by four output. So drastically kind of different in comparison to our previous um, models, much, much smaller, um, but designed for different use cases, I suppose. Um, the way it's been designed is that we have the, all of the inputs have dedicated loop outputs. Mm -hmm. So what that means is this can be anywhere in the production chain now. So perfect for maybe smaller setups or even in larger facilities, actually, where you just want to put that small video hub on a desktop, yeah. have access to those feeds that are given to you, but then loop out and put them anywhere into, yeah. into the world. Yeah, and so if you thought maybe that each of the models are pitched at slightly different use cases, one, the smallest one maybe is on a desk, the bigger ones are in fly, fly packs, or is there anything in mind that you had for like who would buy? And yeah, use potentially. I mean, I think certainly the, the as you progress up the scale, you're going to see them in, in racks and in flight cases, exactly. as you said. Um, I think the most kind of probably the standout feature on these is the emergency input you have exactly, on, the, on, yeah. the front, on the front. Sorry. Um, with that, you can walk up with any SDI uh, device, plug that into the front of the of the router and that's going to overwrite your last input. So if you're on the four input one, it overwrites. The always the last one. It's always going to overwrite the last one. We kind of feel that you're probably going to put the least essential ones sure. towards the end of that. So if you're in a production and someone runs up, oh, I need to get this onto into the um, into the ecosystem, yeah. you can run and plug it into that, and then you've got that available on your last input straight away. Yeah. So perfect on a desktop or on a rack, again, just run up, plug it in, yeah. and go from there. Just like a lot of the other products that I've seen released, there is space for a webcam output as well on this. What's the idea here for that? Yeah, so again, if you're gonna be having this maybe on a desktop mm -hmm. and you just wanna take some of your video feeds in, grab one of those and output it via a webcam, it's great to have that as an option available yeah. there. So what we're taking is the whatever's on output two, in the case of the smaller one, or output four on the slightly larger yes. one, that's going to be what's dedicated to your webcam output from there. So again, we'd probably say that the, the latter of the outputs is maybe your less essential yeah. one, and then we can put it out for you. Makes sense. What about availability on the new Video Hub Minis? So we're expecting those to be really soon, actually. Okay. So we've, we've slated kind of April release, so I think April into, into May, we're going to start to see those come through. Perfect. All right, I'm excited to get my hands on some. Thanks so much for your time. Cheers, John. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.